In the first orbital flight, Starship concluded with a spectacular explosion. That's why NASA has expressed concerns about the potential timeline delays for the completion of their Artemis III lunar mission. However, SpaceX has poured a bucket of cold water on top of NASA. The company has just revealed a section of the nose cone on the upcoming Starship HLS prototype that's about to undergo testing. Stay tuned as we get into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On August 13th, SpaceX relocated a mysterious nose cone from mid-bay. At a glance, we can observe a door taller than the height of the average adult. It seems this door is covered with a type of black nylon fabric and lacks a solid structure. This suggests that SpaceX will frequently utilize it, and surely it holds more intriguing aspects beyond its exterior. Few would guess what implications that door might have with the nose cone. So, let's see this image. Here's a label on the vehicle, enlarged, clearly stating HLS or Human Landing System. Observing the nose cone more closely reveals another interesting aspect. Shifting your gaze downward from the nose cone, you can see numerous pipes and wires connected to a large rectangular electronic panel believed to be the life support system. Wow! This nose cone is indeed part of the Starship HLS mock-up, something that'll take humans back to the moon for the first time in over 50 years. In reality, this HLS nose cone's been produced long before, initially intended for Ship 21, but ultimately becoming part of Ship 22. Therefore, it still has a thermal shield and cap support. When Ship 22 was dismantled due to obsolete issues, its nose cone was brought to Midbay. At Midbay, Nose Cone 22 underwent internal gutting and was redesigned with an evenly hexagonal floor. Unlike the enclosed floors of other remaining nose cones, the floor panel of Nose Cone 22 has an open central hole and is cut entirely around the outer ring adhering to the cone's edge. Moreover, the nose cone integrates an electronic arch and is stacked onto a single ring, shortening its length compared to other nose cones. This also implies it lacks a payload bay. All these new clues have confirmed that the nose cone of Ship 22 is being used as a model for HLS, particularly to test the life support system within the crew compartment. For a Starship HLS, ensuring everything operates well and safely is a prerequisite especially since it will be the means to transport humans to the moon. Starship HLS undoubtedly can't afford to be without a life support system to protect humans from the harsh environments of space. While Starship's continuously being enhanced and comprehensively developed, perhaps the crucial focus for the lunar variant of Starship in the coming period is the successful completion of life support system testing within the nose cone. Despite SpaceX's extensive experience with life support systems through their Crew Dragon spacecraft, providing life support for a short journey into a different orbit is significantly different from supplying life support for humans over the course of several weeks and months in the depths of space. If we consider a basic life support system, it encompasses all the essentials required for human existence on Earth. Anything that aids a crew's survival and functioning while ensuring the environment's safety constitutes a genuine life support system. The most fundamental necessity is breathable air. Life support systems must provide a suitable gas mixture for individuals to breathe and effectively remove carbon dioxide from the air before it reaches hazardous levels. Maintaining the right temperature and atmospheric pressure is crucial. Astronauts will require access to drinking water and proper wastewater disposal facilities. However, when dealing with prolonged periods in space, where individuals reside for months, a regenerative system becomes imperative. This involves recycling crucial elements like oxygen and water within a closed-looped framework. Even urine and sweat are reclaimed and transformed back into potable water. Furthermore, life support systems tend to be intricate and weighty, potentially leading to operational modifications for the vehicle. Ensuring safety during emergencies is also a pivotal consideration. Converting a cargo spacecraft into a crewed vessel entails a multitude of tasks. But there's no need to worry. The emergence of a mock-up for simulating HLS suggests that SpaceX has already identified the necessary steps. 
Elon's also remarked, I don't think it's actually super hard to do that relative to the spacecraft itself, adding, the life support system's pretty straightforward. In the upcoming period, more information about Starship HLS is likely to be unveiled. Thus, they may achieve their ambitious timeline for Starship HLS. If approval for the second launch comes soon, the HLS could execute an unmanned demonstration per the contract with NASA in the coming year. Getting to the moon's a challenge, but long-term existence on the lunar surface is the bigger concern that scientists are worrying about for Starship HLS and the astronauts. The longer people live away from Earth, the more exposure they have to deep space radiation and galactic cosmic rays. These are highly energetic particles that emanate from the sun or distant sources outside our galaxy. They can pierce through skin and other materials, causing damage to biological tissues. The Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field help shield us from the majority of this radiation. But out in deep space and on the moon, that protection goes away. The Apollo astronauts only had small increases in exposure since they were on the moon for such short periods. Living on the moon will entail a completely different level of exposure. And if the sun has a major solar flare, it could send a large dose of radiation toward the moon. NASA and researchers suspect that heightened exposure to radiation could lead to damage to the central nervous system and affect brain function, according to Dorit Donaville, Director of Translational Research Institute for Space Health, which is partnered with NASA. In reality, some kind of radiation shielding will be needed, and Starship's stainless steel exterior may not be enough to protect astronauts for a long time on the surface. Experts have proposed lining long-term lunar habitats with water or ice to slow down these particles. But there are some elements within cosmic rays, known as heavy ions, that might be able to pierce even through that. Perhaps the best option is creating habitats that are covered in lunar dirt, which will require lots of excavation and construction equipment. Mining equipment also becomes critical if this lunar base needs to be self-sustainable. Resupply missions to the moon will be much more difficult than those sent to the International Space Station in Earth's orbit, as the moon is days away in transit time. Astronauts at a moon base will need to rely on the resources around them, such as dirt for construction and potentially water and ice to use for drinking and turn into fuel. All the equipment to mine this could be brought to the moon by Starship, but it's unclear what they'd look like since no one's actually operated such equipment on the moon before. Here on Earth, to set up a mine, it can take up to 20 years, and that's on the Earth, says Phil Metzger, a planetary physicist at the University of Central Florida. So when you talk about setting up a mine on the moon, it's harder, especially because we have less understanding of the resources and we have zero experience in doing mining operations in that environment. The issue of gravity on the moon is also one of the challenges for exploration activities. Our bones and muscles are accustomed to Earth's gravity, but these tissues might deteriorate more quickly on the moon, which has one-sixth of the gravity of our planet. Exercise could mitigate that, but researchers ultimately don't know if that'd be enough or what kind of equipment's needed. There's also just the basic comfort of people to think about. Design decisions like lighting and the angle of chairs during the launch can have impacts on how people feel and behave. Musk has talked about sending 100 people up on Starship, with each person getting about 10 cubic meters of space. Especially in like a zero-G situation, that's actually quite a lot of room, claims Musk. But that may turn out not to be enough in the grand scheme of things, negatively affecting people's mental states. The behavioral aspects are a major concern, and you can't always predict how people are going to react to things being so far away from Earth without direct communication, says Donneville. These issues are truly just the tip of the iceberg. There are still many challenges to overcome for lunar exploration. Of course, SpaceX will address the objective problems on the moon after successfully placing Starship into orbit. The emergence of the HLS nose cone marks a new milestone in the remarkable progress of Starship. Humans will soon return to the moon and even Mars. Surely, the challenges will have solutions, and all we need is time. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.